Okay, hi class. Welcome to the online session. We are going to have five slides for uh, this session, starting with slide number seven, that is submersive hepatic necrosis. We have slide one, two, six, and nine. We have slide sixty-eight, that is chronic progressive hepatitis. We have slide one, two, six, that is hepatic central hemorrhagic necrosis. Slide 34, alcoholic liver disease, and slide 183, this is liver cirrhosis. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so our first slide is submassive hepatic necrosis. This is identified with acute liver failure which is defined as an acute liver illness that manifested within 26 weeks after initial liver injury and it is accompanied by encephalopathy wherein our patients have uh, sleepiness would undergo comatose and uh, would have CNS manifestations as well as coagulopathy. And etiology for this case for submassive hepatic necrosis would be drug toxicity. Like when we have patients who had drug overdose like acetaminophen overdose, autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, if we have acute viral illness, uh, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, can present with, uh, with submassive hepatic necrosis or acute liver failure and uh, hepatitis E. Okay. So histologically what we would see here would be the presence of this uh, areas of fibrosis okay. and then we have clumps of hepatocytes and high power magnification, we would see these areas to contain what are these? These are lipid droplets. And then, uh, what would be the sign of necrosis would be the absence of the absence of the nucleus. So some of the cells here would show absence of the nucleus, would show eosinophilia and the cytoplasm. Those are signs of coagulative necrosis because you still have retention of the ghost outlines of the, of, the, of the cell but absence of the nucleus. So this is submassive hepatic necrosis found with acute liver failure. Okay? So next we have slide 68. This is chronic aggressive hepatitis okay. so chronic aggressive hepatitis would be this can be part of viral hepatitis can be part of alcoholic liver disease with alcohol hepatitis and then we have drug toxicity the hepatitis here would be characterized by the presence of ballooning degeneration of the hepatocytes okay, or having, having a fibrillary degeneration of the hepatocytes. So this would be the hepatocytes. Notice that there's an increase in the size of the cell. Okay, there's the granularity of the cytoplasm and that would be what we call as the ballooning degeneration or fibrillary degeneration of the hepatocytes. And accompanying it, would be the presence of inflammation. So the hallmark or the, the, the defining feature of a chronic hepatitis would be the presence of mononuclear cell infiltrates found in the portal tracts. Okay? So as you can see here, they are forming pseudonodular formations. That's why I think it was labeled as a chronic aggressive hepatitis. This would be due to the presence of uh, 
inflammatory cells linking the different part of trans to one another. So there is the presence of uh, dense numbers of inflammatory cells. These are mononuclear cell infiltrates. If we have some of the cells that would go into the parenchyma, we, can, we call it as interface hepatitis. Interface hepatitis. Okay. And notice that you can see some lines already that would come with the mononuclear cell infiltrates. And this would be a sign of bridging fibrosis and necrosis. This is chronic aggressive hepatitis. If you're going to look at the other areas of the slide, so you can still appreciate the ballooning degeneration of the hepatocytes, and then you see the presence of inflammatory cells. Next, we have slide 34. This is acute liver disease, ALD. So, for acute liver disease, the ethanol would be the culprit here. And this is a late stage of the disease because you can see the presence of nodular formations of hepatocytes. And this would mean that it is cirrhosis. Okay. So, uh, what are the three stages for alcoholic liver disease? So the first one would be hepatic steatosis. And this is identified with the presence of lipid accumulation within hepatocytes. The pathologic steatosis is if it's more than 5%. Okay? So here you have the presence of steatosis. Lipid accumulation. And then the second stage would be alcoholic hepatitis. When you say alcoholic hepatitis, it means that there is the presence of the ballooning degeneration of hepatocytes. Let's look for the ballooning degeneration compared to the normal one. Here. Okay. So, so you can see there's a difference in the color of the ones with ballooning degeneration. These are the normal hepatocytes with the pink cytoplasm. And then here you have the ones with fibrillary cytoplasm. So these are the ones with ballooning degeneration of hepatocytes. Okay. And then we also have the presence of segmenters or neutrophilic reaction. There's neutrophilic reaction present uh, with the second stage. So these are neutrophils. Yeah. Okay, these are neutrophils. And then our last feature for, for the second stage would be Mallory deck bodies. So the Mallory deck, let's try to look for a Mallory deck. Because it's important for you to be able to uh, and to be able to identify them. There. So the manually tank here would be this one. The accumulations of this peak cytoplasmic material, uh, pink or eosinophilic cytoplasmic material that is composed of cytokeratins. Let's try to look for another one because that is not very clear. What would be the uh, this one? 
Here we have malary neck body, malary neck bodies. What would be your differential diagnosis? Okay, you see it like this one. What's this? This is the little bit of bile. This one, these are malary neck bodies. This one also. That's malary neck body. This one has a different color. So this is already bile or the urine. So here, this is a sign of cholestasis. So what do you call this ductual? This is a bile catalicus. And within it, you have the cholestasis. So this is slide 34, alcoholic liver disease. Next we have slide 126. Okay. Slide 126 is hepatic central hemorrhagic necrosis. So where do we find this one? We find this one in cases of circulatory disorders like left-sided heart failure like shock and this is associated with hepatic central uh, so hepatic central hemorrhagic necrosis which show central lobular uh, involvement and what are the main histologic features for this so if you're going to look at the high power uh, at the scanning view you can see patchy areas that would show lighter areas and darker areas. Grossly, if we're going to appreciate this one, this is what we call as the nutmeg liver, which is seen in chronic passive congestion of the liver, wherein we have the lighter brown color or red color and darker red color brown color, and the darker uh, area would signify the presence of necrosis and hemorrhage. We are going to look at the high power magnification. These are viable hepatocytes. And then here you have presence of dead hepatocytes as well as areas of hemorrhage. So later on when those areas would, uh, would uh, lyse, there would be areas of fibrosis here. And that's the time that we call this uh, this area as cardiac sclerosis. So we try to look at the other portions. You can see the presence of the necrosis and hemorrhage. So that would be a very important feature to look for. Okay. Our last slide for today would be slide 183. This is a generic uh, diagnosis. This is liver cirrhosis. So you can see the presence of regenerating nodules surrounding, surrounded by fibrous, fibrous septa. So what do you call this one? These are called bile lakes. Bile lakes. We're going to be asked, what are those ducts that would contain these bile lakes? These are. So this this would be a, a bile duct tube. These are bile ductions. If they are located within, uh, within the parenchyma, okay, these, are, these are what we call as bile canalipuli. Notice there is also presence of BUB pigment accumulation within the cytoplasm. So this is a sign of cholestasis. This is marked or severe cholestasis. So those are the slides that we have for this session. Kindly check on uh, check on the discussions. Okay. So thank you and good day.